Have you ever wondered about the beginnings of the black Hebrews in America? This story is as fascinating as it is multifaceted, revealing an intricate mosaic of faith, individuality, and tenacity. Our epic journey unfolds in the late 19th century, a tumultuous time when America was on the cusp of significant social and political transformations. This era, still echoing the remnants of recently granted freedom and the yet unfulfilled promise of absolute equality, gave birth to the Black Hebrew Movement. This movement, embodying a unique fusion of religious belief and racial identity, sprang from the depths of a society grappling with its newfound diversity and the challenges this brought. The seeds of this movement began to take root, germinating amidst the turbulence of this era. It germinated in the hearts of the oppressed, amidst individuals yearning for a sense of belonging, for recognition, for a unique identity that resonated with history and aspirations. The first notable individual to articulate the black Hebrew beliefs was a man named Frank Cherry. Cherry was not just a man, but a symbol of historical resilience. Born of former slaves in the scenic Chattanooga, Tennessee, in the mid-1800s, he was the epitome of perseverance and tenacity. Cherry claimed divine revelation, asserting that African Americans were the descendants of the biblical Israelites. This audacious claim not only challenged existing perceptions, but also laid the foundational bricks of the black Hebrew ideology. In the year 1896, Cherry put his beliefs into action, establishing the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of truth for all nations. His teachings, while not universally accepted, did ignite a spark. They gave rise to questions, debates and conversations that challenged existing dogmas and instigated a subtle shift in societal perceptions. These teachings, initially greeted with skepticism by many, were the seeds Cherry planted. The seeds that would grow into a movement he could hardly have imagined, a movement that would far exceed his most extraordinary dreams. His teachings, although met with skepticism by some, planted the seeds for a movement that would grow beyond his wildest dreams. As the 1900s dawned, a significant figure emerged on the scene, William Saunders Crowdy. Crowdy was not just an ordinary man, his journey was remarkable. As a former slave, he had experienced the harshest conditions one can imagine. Despite this, he didn't allow it to define him. Instead, he chose to rise above it, proving his mettle in the face of adversity by enlisting as a Union soldier during a tumultuous time in American history. Following the end of his military service, Crowdy didn't settle down into a mundane existence. Instead, he found a higher calling, establishing the Church of God and Saints of Christ in 1896. This institution was not just another religious establishment. It served as a beacon of hope the African-American community. It was a guiding light, helping its followers find their way in a society that often marginalized them. Crowdy's teachings were not random musings. They were carefully thought out, resonating with the philosophies of his predecessor, Cherry. His teachings were instrumental in further solidifying the black Hebrew identity, a unique cultural and religious identity that combined elements of Judaism with African roots. This identity became a symbol of pride and unity, a torch carried by millions of African Americans. The early 20th century witnessed an important event, the Great Migration. This mass exodus of African Americans from the rural south to the urban north was more than just a geographical shift, it was a cultural transformation. It played a pivotal role in the proliferation of black Hebrew beliefs. As millions sought better lives in cities like Chicago and New York, they didn't leave their roots behind. They carried with them their diverse beliefs and practices. A palette of cultural color painted the urban north with the hues of their heritage. One such practice was black Hebrewism. It wasn't just a religious belief, it was a cultural identity, a statement of pride and unity. As these individuals established their lives in new cities, they brought with them the essence of black Hebrewism, thus ensuring its survival and growth. The Great Migration of the early 20th century played a crucial role in the spread of black Hebrew beliefs. As millions sought better lives in cities like Chicago and New York, they brought with them their diverse beliefs and practices, including black Hebrewism. 
The mid-20th century witnessed the birth of several black Hebrew congregations, marking a significant shift in the religious landscape of the time. This era, vibrant and transformative, was shaped significantly by these new waves of faith communities, each contributing uniquely towards the growth and evolution of black Hebrew congregations. One such congregation that stood out was the Commandment Keepers, it was founded by a visionary and spiritual pioneer, Wentworth Arthur Matthew, in the year 1919. Matthew was not just a founder, but an inspiring and beacon of hope for many. He was a man of strength and character, embodying the essence of a spiritual leader. His teachings and guidance were instrumental in knitting together a congregation that was resolute, devout and deeply rooted in their faith. Matthew's teachings were unique, deeply spiritual, and richly textured. They pulled from the depth and essence of traditional Jewish practices, blending them seamlessly with the contemporary realities of the time. His approach was innovative, yet remained anchored in time-honored traditions. Matthew was a man who believed in the transcendental power of faith, and his teachings this belief. The underpinnings of his teachings were based on Sabbath observance and kosher dietary laws, which formed integral parts of worship. These practices spanned across communities, traditions and generations. The Sabbath observance was a way of life, a sanctified time for rest and worship. It was a day set apart for spiritual enrichment and community bonding. The kosher dietary laws, on the other hand, were not merely about food. They were a manifestation of a deeper spiritual discipline, reflecting the covenant between the divine and the congregation. These practices painted a vivid picture of the congregation's faith journey, from its humble beginnings to its established present. It was these foundations laid by Matthew that charted the course for the growth and evolution of the black Hebrew congregations. Matthew's teachings were rooted in traditional Jewish practices, with Sabbath observance and kosher dietary laws forming integral parts of worship. Fast forward to the 1960s and 70s, a time of civil rights movements and a resurgence of African consciousness. This period witnessed the emergence of groups such as the African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem, who took black Hebrew beliefs to a global stage by emigrating to Israel. Thus, from humble beginnings in the late 19th century to a global presence in the 20th century, the black Hebrew movement in America has grown and evolved. It has navigated the tumultuous waters of social change, held steadfast in the face of adversity, and continues to thrive to this day. To recap, the origins of black Hebrews in America trace back to the late 19th century, with figures like Frank Cherry and William Saunders Crowdy laying the foundation. The movement spread during the Great Migration and grew in the mid-20th century with the establishment of more congregations. The 1960s and 70s saw the movement reach a global scale with groups such as the African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem. The story of the black Hebrews is a testament to the power of faith and the enduring search for identity. It is a narrative interwoven with the broader tapestry of African American history, a story that continues to evolve just as the people who are part of it.